Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. Yes, I love technology. Today we are going to take a look at another motherboard this time from Raxa. In terms of motherboard, so this is a mini ITX motherboard, but in reality in, in the middle of it, the SOC is something that we are used to seeing that in this channel which is RK3588. So there is an RK3588 in the middle of it. The, it supports obviously LPDDR5, RAM goes up to 32 gigabyte. Because it is RK3588 SOC, it also comes with four ARM Cortex-A76 and four ARM Cortex-A55, six TOPS NPU, comes with Mali-G610 GPU, we have seen it all in other boards, Rock 5B, Rock 5B Plus, and all that stuff, right? But this one is actually in Mini ITX form. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I got this Raxa Rock 5 ITX, 16 gigabyte RAM, 8 gigabyte eMMC. And by the way, I heard, I saw in their website when I was checking this out, it comes with Ruby, I believe it was Ruby, Ruby OS uh, pre-installed. And it seems like it's an OS that Raxa develops, which helps you with installing other operating system, something like that. So that's there. So anyway, let me bring the knife. Let's take this out, see what is inside. Okay, all right. So Rock 5 ITX in mini ITX form, okay? And in terms of specs, RK3588 SOC, quad, yep, we talked about it, 2.2, 2.4 gigahertz for A76 cores, and A55 cores are 1.8 gigahertz, and those are for the background processes. ARM Mali G10, we talked about it, MPU 6 tops, we talked about it, RAM, LPDDR5, and I bought the 16 gigabyte version. Storage, you can use the micro SD slot, micro SD card slot, uh, you can use the onboard 8GB eMMC for Ruby OS installer. And then there is an M.2 M key connector supporting NVMe SSD, which we're going to test. And then there's four SATA connectors, which I got these from Raxa. So Raxa shipped this to me. And these are the SATA connectors that we need to power our SATA disks, which I'm going to test. There is also display port and USB and other stuff. Let me take it out. Let's take a look at it. There are some screws. I think those are NVMe SSD screws. And there's also IO shield. Okay, let's take this out. Okay, that's a beautiful board. 17 by 17 centimeters. In terms of IO, here is the IO, right? There are two 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And you can also add Wi-Fi, but you need a card. This is the M key for the storage and this is E key for wireless. I O there are three USB 3 ports, okay? And two USB 2 and you can get some more USB 2 ports by using the front panel, okay? And then there is a speaker, microphone and SPDIF in here, two HDMI's over here. These two are two HDMI outputs and it uh, seems like this one is HDMI input. Okay, just like Rock 5B. And there's a USB-C port over here. As far as I know, this is a, uh, this also supports DisplayPort and supports up to 4K 60fps. This is power barrel jack for power supply. We are going to actually use this power supply. I'm going to use the ATX power supply. This is a mini ATX motherboard, computer, whatever you want to call it. So we are going to use that. And then there is the four SATA connections. So SATA power, SATA connection, SATA power, SATA connection, and so forth, so on. And RK3588 is right here. These are front panel, front USB is here, front panel is here, front audio is here, SD card is here, camera one, camera zero, LCD, and so on. So there is also a power for fan here. And there's a PoE, by the way. You need another module, but I think you can power this whole board with a PoE as well. So give me a couple of minutes. Uh, let me put the power supply, bring some NVMe SSD and uh, regular SSDs and I will be right back. I connected one, two, three, four N SSDs to these slots and one NVMe SSD over here. So what I learned is that sometimes these boards are supposed to come with Ruby OS, which is an OS for installing OS and it is from Raxa. And what I learned is if it doesn't boot into it, you have to 
insert the Ruby installer into, NVM, into an SD card, uh, which I did, uh, put it in there and everything is automatic. The only thing is you have to remove all the storage devices. So you have to remove all these and insert the SD card and it will automatically flash the Ruby installer into EMMC that's on board. And now we are going to boot into it. So we are going to now boot into the uh, Ruby OS. Now you'll see the power consumption over here. Uh, so hopefully it will detect all S SSDs and NVMe SSD. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I will be using uh, SSD for the OS, uh, NVMe SSD for the OS, and all these four uh, for storage. And as you can see, the fan is spinning. Uh, Ethernet is light is, okay, there you go. There are some, uh, there you go. So it's booting now. This should boot into, as I said, Ruby OS. It is from Raxa and uh, you, you can use that to install operating systems that are supported, okay? So that's a nice UI. We're gonna agree. You have to go to the settings, click on auto and confirm. It is connected. There you go. So we have two operating system choices that I can install. I guess I can go with Armbian. It's uh, it, it is, it's been better uh, for a couple other racks of boards that I've tested. So let's go with Armbian. And uh, the image has not been security verified. That's okay. Okay, and uh, yep, it detected all my storage devices. I'm gonna go install it into this NVMe SSD for the operating system. We're gonna go with that. Okay. And next and confirm. Seems like everything in his orders. Uh, I'm going to come back when the operating system is installed uh, and it's done. Actually, there was some problem. Yeah, it keeps download error, retries. Well, that didn't work. Okay, let's go with Debian. Maybe that one works. Same one. Yes, it seems like it is Filling some sort of cache or, well, that didn't work either. Uh, there's some problems with this. I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't work. Is there any other clear to cache custom image? Okay, so let's try again with the Debian that was making more progress. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. Confirm. Well, that sucks. Let's try again. The good thing is it, uh, it seems like it is continuing from where it's left off. Okay, yeah, that was it. All right, let me install it and uh, we will be right back. Okay, so we are back. And uh, let me show you. It's actually... Uh, it went smooth. Uh, initially, it, there was some stutter during the install. That's what you saw. You just, I, I just had to keep repeating and retrying. I don't know, maybe it's just something in my case, but I had to deal with that. Here is the Neo Fetch, and as you can see, everything is there. And if I do a fast fetch, actually, that one had more info. Yeah, right here, you will see that uh, it detected also the GPU in here and also the cpu is right there memory is 16 gigabyte and all that stuff okay now let's do a quick stress ng okay so uh, as you saw in there uh, the power consumption went up to 21 watts with four disks connected and then vme ssd and the CPU, we are getting 12,036. For reference, Raspberry Pi 5 is 870 something. So let's say 800 to 900, 900-ish, let's say. So it's, a, it's faster than a Raspberry Pi 5. And we are booted into KDE environment, as you can see. And it's a 4K resolution. I just enabled scaling, sorry, uh, not the zoom. So it's scaling. Uh, let's try actually a, a 4K video playback. And as you can see, it's generally snappy. Okay, so we are playing a 4K video 
on a 4K resolution with 150% uh, uh, scaling. And it is playing the video smoothly, relatively, but it just drops some frames here and there. But yeah, it is playing a 4K video without any problems, as you can see on the screen. Um, so yeah, there you go. As you can see, it's, it's okay. It is, there are some frames being dropped here and there, but relatively it's doing okay. So that's the that's the bro the browser that comes with the OS. And one thing I want to test is actually the uh, iPerf uh, for the Ethernet to be 2.5. And yeah, so there was no problem with the Ethernet. It just uh, during the download it was stuttering. And as you can see, the power consumption is right there. And the other thing I wanted to test was how fast it can communicate uh, with the. NVMe SSD yep that's that's great that's great that's the speed I was expecting from such a device so it is uh, it is really fast in terms of uh, communicating with the PCIe for these NVMe SSDs let me try that one as well that's gonna be SDA I guess SDA SDB SDC okay SDB one let's try that okay okay that's fair that's fair that's the number for these uh, regular ssds so i always it is doing great i don't think i can i'm i'm not gonna try uh you might try to install some some uh, application like open media vault uh but i don't think it's official supported not sure there might be some uh, some modified version that some people have installed but this is a kde debian not sure if that will work with the open media vault easily out of box without uh, modifications but it is it is there i guess there is also no gpio to test all the all the disks are detected from what i can tell even during the install it was detected yep one two three four this is the installer thing and this is the operating system we are booted from as you can see so overall this seems to be actually also it's very quiet and the temperatures and stuff it look it's it's yeah let's see the temperatures hold on okay so these are the temperatures that are detected over there okay and as that is running i am going to do a, a stress ng and uh, let's do a suspension this time okay look at the temperatures that goes up 20 watts Temperatures goes up to 43, 44. Okay, so it's not bad. It's it's good. And uh, 13,900 similar results. So Raspberry Pi 5, you can score 10,500 in, in stress, uh, suspension score. And this is scoring 13,900, almost 1,400. Temperatures are really good. Uh, the heatsink is, is doing great. And it is the original one for this board. As far as I can test and I can see, everything is working properly. Uh, yeah, nothing else comes to my mind. I tested what I can in this. And uh, open media walls, I'm not gonna go there for now so yeah I, this is a small 17 by 17 inch computer and uh, i was able to get some good speeds on nvme and sata and you can absolutely turn this into some sort of nas device uh, or even daily uh, you know using it as a daily computer uh, it it can support a lot of storage obviously and also generally it is fast uh, not necessarily gaming but emulation gaming absolutely you can do on this so yeah uh thanks for watching please let me know if you have any questions down below and uh, i will see you in the next video bye for now